So you hear about engineering from your high school counselor or you watch Iron Man and you're like, okay, this is the major for me. Then you start shopping around for majors and you're like, ooh, biomedical engineering. Am I gonna design a cyborg in my first year? Or you choose electrical engineering and you think you're gonna design the next Tesla Model S. You watch mad Elon Musk motivational videos and you're like, this is it. Or you're just like, you know what? I'll figure it out when I get there. So you get there and you're hit with college physics, like some basic stuff. And you see this block sliding problem and your head starts spinning. And you're like, okay, this is hard, but let's see how it goes. And you take your first exam and you're right there taking your first exam and the clock is ticking and you leave and you're like, okay, that was not too bad. And then the following week, the professor announces the average was a 37 and you're like, there's no way I got a 37. Like that must suck whoever got that. And you check your grade and you have a 12. I'm not kidding about these numbers. So of course you decide to drop out or worse, you switch to business and you pack your bags, but thankfully your parents talk you out of it. All right, so you're back into engineering school and okay, you do survive the physics and the calculus and you're like, okay, what's next? Now is the time to innovate, right? Well, not too soon. You first have to spend countless hours doing more problem sets and you're probably gonna spend long hours waiting for the TAs, office hours, and it's barely gonna help. But now you get to the important stuff and you decide you want to get an internship. So you mentally prepare yourself for all the rejections you're anticipating and you decide to apply online and you fill out like 50 applications and like only like two recruiters reach out and one of them ghosts you. And comes graduation and you're like applying for a job and then same thing is happening. So you ask yourself, what went wrong? What was I sold? Is this really what engineering is about? And this is really the biggest problem for engineering school is I feel like the students are not mentally prepared for what's about to happen. This is especially true if you're not going to like some top school where they just magically match you with opportunities. If you went to a local state school like I did, man, it was brutal. And there is light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, right now I get to work on very cool, innovative stuff. But before I had to get there, I had to eat a lot of dirt. In other words, I had to go through like the hundreds of application rejections I had to go work for free. I had to go like volunteer as an undergraduate researcher so to get experience. And engineering school overall is just a lot more brutal than what most people think. And again, it's not just a matter of difficulty or rigor. It's just a matter of you're not psychologically prepared to go through something like that. And that's why it's so easy to weed people out because if you're not in the right mindset and if you're gonna quit at the first challenge, then yeah, it's gonna suck. And there's nothing wrong with quitting if you just decide I'm not interested in this at all. But if you think this is still interesting and you still want to innovate and you want to be part of this, then I would strongly urge you not to quit. And yes, eat some dirt in the beginning. Well, maybe not literally, but go through the difficulties and face the rejections and whatnot. And yes, in the short term, they're painful, but hey, any short term painful experience is usually good for the long term. It's totally okay to be lost and not even know if that's the right thing for you, but you just have to keep trying and you have to reach a point where you have tried enough where you can make a definite decision. And again, if you're lost in your early 20s, like that's totally normal. I know with social media now, like we have 15 year old millionaires, but I mean like Jeff Bezos didn't start Amazon until he was like 30. And when he was like in his 20s, he was just a regular college graduate and he got a job. Whatever it is, you have, you have some advantage. You just have to tap into it. If you're fine, just keep trying, please do not quit. We need engineers, we need people who innovate. And the good news is once you graduate, you don't have to work right away. Like if you still want to explore a bit more or learn some more things, uh, you can definitely go to graduate school and or you could do like me and pursue a PhD. And I made a video about why I pursued a PhD in engineering. So you should check this video about why I pursued my PhD in engineering. Peace, love.